I've edited thousands of videos over the years, so I feel pretty confident in saying that if you're still doing everything with a mouse and keyboard, you might be working harder than you need to. This is the Tourbox Elite Plus, and at first glance, it might look like a strange little video game controller, but it's an incredibly powerful tool that allows me to edit smarter and faster. And in this video, I'll show you what this is, what it can do, how I've got mine set up, and how it could save you time on everything every single project. So secure the cup and let's dive in. If you've never seen one before, the Tourbox Elite Plus is a compact controller made specifically for creative software. Things like video editing, photo retouching, music production, that kind of thing. It connects to your computer and gives you physical, customizable controls like dials, scroll wheels, and buttons, all designed to help you work faster without having to constantly reach for the mouse or memorizing a million keyboard shortcuts. I've actually used the Tourbox for a few years now, starting with the Tourbox Neo. So let me show you why I started using Tourbox in the first place and how it ended up becoming a permanent part of my workflow. A few years ago, I hit a point where I was editing so much, video, photo, audio, everything, that I started looking for something to streamline that process. I didn't want to reinvent how I worked, I just wanted it to feel smoother. Less clicking, less keyboard gymnastics, and more efficiency. That's when I found the Tourbox Neo, and right away it checked a lot of the boxes that I was looking for. Fully customizable, compact, well-built, and it didn't hurt that it was kind of fun to fidget with. It let me keep one hand on the controller and the other hand on the mouse, and it didn't take long before it became part of how I worked. Now, the one that I'm using here is the newest version, the Elite Plus, and while it looks pretty similar at a glance, it's got some fresh updates over the older models. Like the slick new transparent look, it's got Bluetooth, it's got haptic feedback, which is really awesome, and the ability to switch between multiple devices, including iPad connectivity. So if you're someone who works across multiple computers or uses an iPad, you can now use Tourbox. But what actually keeps the Tourbox on my desk is how it fits into my workflow, especially in DaVinci Resolve. So let me walk you through how I use it. The biggest thing that Tourbox has done for me is to help keep the editing flowing, especially when I'm deep in a timeline and I don't want to break focus. Basically, I've taken all my most used functions, shortcuts, and macros and mapped them all to a layout that's built entirely around feel and customizability. The unique dials and wheels make navigating way more tactile than using a keyboard where every key is basically the same thing. It's not that I couldn't do this stuff before, I've got plenty of muscle memory on a keyboard, and if you you've seen my video on DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts, there's a lot of overlap between all the things I talk about in that video and how I have this programmed. But with the Tourbox, it just feels smoother, like I'm physically editing with my hands instead of typing in commands. And the wild part is that a lot of the time, I'm not even using the most advanced features that the Tourbox is capable of, things like release actions, hold and release AB actions, or complex macro options. One day, I'm sure I'll find a reason to dive into those more advanced features, but even without them, the Tourbox still makes a serious difference in my process. And I know that probably sounds like a lot of abstract praise, but it's way easier to show than to explain. So let me take you into the software and I'll walk you through how I've actually got mine set up for DaVinci Resolve editing, because I think it's pretty clever. Not to toot my own horn or anything. Okay, this is Tourbox Console, the software that controls how everything on the device works. It runs in the background and lets you fully customize what every single button, dial, and wheel does. One of the things that I love is that you can build separate layouts for different programs, and Tourbox will automatically switch between them based on which one you're using at the time. So no menus, no toggling, it just does it automatically. There are a bunch of different presets for different programs if you want to get started quickly but I built mine from scratch specifically for DaVinci Resolve, and I've got it mapped out in a way that's all about muscle memory, speed, and keeping my hand on the controller the whole time if possible. The D-pad is where the most of my core editing happens. Up is blade cut, 
down is ripple delete, left is trim to start, and right is trim to end. Like I said, these four are probably the ones that I hit the most often of any button. The one that they call the short button in the bottom right is my play pause. C1 and C2, the little round buttons, are undo and redo. The scroll wheel up in the top left shifts or trims clips one frame to the left or right, and pressing down on that is for copy, and we'll talk about the paste in a minute. The knob in the middle scrubs frame by frame, and pressing it adds a marker. The dial down in the bottom left zooms in on the timeline and out if you go the other way, and pressing it is the zoom to fit function. What they call the top button toggles between selection mode and trim edit mode. The single click will take you to selection, which is the normal mode, and then double click will take you into trim mode, which I use every once in a while. And then the side button pulls up the clip attributes dialog. And then there's the tall button, which I actually use kind of as a modifier key. By holding it down, it activates kind of a second layer of functions, but I've mapped those in a way that are logically connected to the originals of each button. So while holding that button down, the scroll wheel now shifts by five frames instead of one, and pressing it will paste. Remember that was the copy before. The knob will now scrub by one second instead of one frame, and pressing it deletes a marker instead of adding one. The dial adjusts the track height instead of the width, and if you press it, it will zoom the viewer to fit. C1 and C2 now jump to the previous and next clip. Up enables or disables a clip, down deletes gaps, left jumps to the timeline start, right jumps to the timeline end, the short button becomes the L key which just plays at a faster speed, and the side button is for paste attributes. Another feature that I'm really excited about is something Tourbox is rolling out for DaVinci Resolve called Hover Adjust. It basically lets you hover your cursor over sliders or color wheels or whatever you want and adjust them without even clicking. It's such a great idea and it's definitely gonna take the ability to keep your hand on the controller and the mouse to the the next level. And there are still a ton of things that I'm not even touching, combinations I'm not using, and room to grow, but everything is intentional and intuitive. And that's what makes this setup work so well for me. It's not just about packing in the shortcuts, it's about making everything feel connected and, like I said, intuitive. I'm not thinking about the controls anymore, I'm just editing. So that's how I've got mine set up, but what really makes Tourbox worth talking about is how much you can adapt it to whatever way you work and how it can and benefit you. Now, obviously I've been talking about video editing, but if you do anything creative, whether it's video, photo, audio, the tour box might be one of those upgrades you didn't even realize that you needed. It's not about changing what you do, it's about making the whole process feel smoother, more focused, and honestly more enjoyable. The best analogy that I've got is that it's kind of like driving a higher trim of car than you're used to. The keyboard and mouse, that's kind of like your base trim, but the tour box setup, that's got keyless entry, backup camera, push start, heated seats, and once you get used to that, it's pretty hard to go back. So if you've been looking for a way to speed up your workflow and make your creative process just feel better, I definitely think it's worth checking out the tour box. There is a link down in the description if you want to take a look, and using that link also helps to support the channel. And if you have any questions about the tour box, how I've got mine set up, or you want help figuring out how you might want to use it, drop a comment and I'll do my best to try and help you out. And on your way down there, if you found this insightful or helpful, hit that like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification button so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you to Tourbox for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this one, and I'll see you next time. We did it. Tourbox. Seriously so awesome.